Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. Asazanthin, fermented asazanthin, and a true market disruptor. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, you know like this video. Obviously, it really helps out a lot. Um, you know, I've always I've really had my channel kind of suppressed and over the years for a number of things that I've said. Um, you know, you'd think a health guy, what could he have to say that would YouTube would want to suppress things and demonetize, you'd be surprised. So that helps a lot. So uh, first of all, what is asazanthin? Well, asazanthin is a carotenoid. And uh, these are like pigments and, you know, beta carotene is a pigment. And, um, and then there's um, lycopene that comes from tom tomatoes. That's a pigment. And they're really strong antioxidants, so they're really healthy. And then there's other ones that are, kind, you know, there's also, there's a whole line of them. And then there's something called zeaxanthin, that's good for your eyes. And then there's cathazanthin and anthazanthin. There's all these other carotenoids. And then you get to astaxanthin. And astaxanthin is the king of carotenoids. I wrote about it in my book, uh, Chlorella and Spirulina, the, king, all super, the kings of all superfoods. It's like heart support, eye support, joint support, immune support, um, you know, it's great for strength. It makes you a lot stronger. Azazanthin is what you see in pink flamingos. If you look at their feathers, they kind of turn pink or red. That's from the azazanthin uh, that they're eating there from this algae. So they eat so much of it and they like it. And then it ends up, they get, their bodies become saturated and it comes out in their feathers. Uh, you look at a, a wild salmon. Um, that's got azazanthin. So what we have, um, you know, what you've seen for many, many years is what you think you're getting from this algae that's called hematococcus and then they grow this stuff for about you know, 10 weeks, 12 weeks and then they, you know, they say, they always say they piss it off. What they do is um, they, you know, get it into a position where they need to, you know, it needs to protect itself. And so it produces azazanthin and you change the temperature of the water, you change the uh, you change the pH of the water, the amount of sunlight, and then it produces this asazanthin. Well, um, up until now, this is the only way we've been able to get asazanthin. Here's a product here. I take, I've been taking asazanthin for many, many years. It was, uh, it was uh, first introduced uh, about around 2005 by a company that learned how to do this, and then this asazanthin hyperaccumulates on the outside of the algae and then you, you strain it off and you've got asazanthin. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, that product has some asazanthin in it, but it really doesn't have asazanthin like we've got. So um, what we have been doing is fermenting asazanthin. Now there's a couple different ways out there people have been fermenting it. There's something called fafia, yeast. If you can get in too detailed here, but you really only have maybe 25% of the mo molecule. And then some people have been synthesizing it, but we have fermented it. And when I say we, I don't want to tell you who it is right now because it hasn't gone into full production. But we have asazanthin that is fermented and it's a proprietary, you know, it's got patents around it and everything. And we know that this is 100% asazanthin because we're looking for this. And then we did something called this test on it, you know, HPLC, and HPLC is, you know, high performance liquid chromatography. So that really tells you exactly what you got. So if you look, look at this chart, and then on the right-hand side of the chart, you're going to see algae-grown asazanthin. Well, there's a little tiny bit of asazanthin in there, and then there's all these impurities. And when I say impurities, it means it's not asazanthin. We don't really know what it is. I mean, you could spend a fortune trying to figure out what each one of these little peaks are over here on the right. But, um, you know, we held it up against the true asazanthin, you know, standard that we have through HPLC. That's the testing method. And, you know, there's a little bit in there, but there's not very much. So if you've been taking asazanthin all these years, you haven't really been taking too much asazanthin. You've been taking some, and there's nothing wrong with these products. But I'm telling you right now, this is, you know, if you really want the real thing, then you got to look over on the left side of the chart and you'll see that our asazanthin that has been fermented through this really proprietary method, nobody's ever done this before, um, that is absolutely 100% pure asazanthin and it's 70 times more than you're going to find in algae. So this is a breakthrough. Now when this hits the market, uh, hopefully in 2024, um, when it first hits, 
this is going to be a market disruptor. So in my business, a market disruptor is something that comes in and just totally changes everything. Take, take, just turns it all upside down. Um, you know, there's one called Genucel, that's like a cream. That, that was a market disruptor because they, they marketed that in a totally different way that nobody had been done before and it was, you know, it, it was a cream that affected your stem cells. So that was the one. Then there was something called Halo, Halo Ice Cream. I never tried any of it, but honestly, it's just on the top of them, they show you 280 and 360. That's the amount of calories in that entire carton. So you could eat that whole thing and then you wouldn't feel guilty because normally you're looking at 1,200, 1,500 calories at least if you're going to eat one of these pints of really good qu uh, quality uh, uh, ice cream. Well, uh, anyway, so that was a market disruptor. It's called Halo ice cream. So this is going to be a market disruptor because, um, you know, these guys that produce algae, um, they're really not going to be able to compete with what we have. I think they might go out of business. You never know. Who knows? Um, probably. Who knows? But you know, we've, we're going to be producing this acesanthin that is, as I said, 100% pure acesanthin through this test method, HPLC, and it really is 70 times more than what you see here. And we can make in one day, which it takes the algae guys, you know, probably anywhere from 12 to 15 weeks to produce. And of course, you're at the, you're at the, uh, the mercy of the sun uh, and the uh, weather and um, the temperature of, um, you know, of the water. So you're at the mercy of, of nature. Whereas here, we're fermenting it in a controlled environment. And, and as I said, in one day, we can produce what they are going to, uh, it's going to take them 12 to 15 weeks, sometimes longer. But let's say that's the kind of the range. We can do that in a day, and then ours is 100% pure. So when you take our asses, Anthony, if you think that you've taken it before, you're really going to feel this. Because a lot of people have marketed this. So this is the supplement, ashesanthin is a supplement you can feel. Okay, so there's always, they've always taken lutein, which is another carotenoid, and they put it with zeaxanthin for your eyes. Well, if you, if, you want it, if you want something even more powerful than zeaxanthin, another carotenoid, which is really good, you get that from marigold, um, now you're going to want to get this. You're going you're gonna to feel even better, and it's going to be more effective coming from astaxanthin. So... This is pretty amazing. I'm involved in this uh, this project. I'm pretty happy about it, as you can tell. Um, I'm a real, you know, I'm a supplement guy, and I'm a health guy, and I understand, you know, what these things are, and how they can really benefit our body. People tell me all the time, should I take supplements? And it's like, yeah, because you're you you know you can't supplement your way to health, um, but um, because it all comes down to your diet. But what you do have to do is you have to um, you know add things to your to your diet and to your regimen that are really going to help you a lot. Acesanthin is a really good one, but it's super expensive. Well, the price is going to come way down, the purity is going to go way up, and this is going to be a true market disruptor, and I can't wait for it to come on the market. I had some the other day, and I guess, I mean, I had pure acesanthin. First of all, the stuff you get now is kind of a fishy taste because it comes from this algae called hematococcus, so it has this fishy taste to it. Uh, it's really actually really really bad if you ever bite into one of these gel caps um, then uh, it this is the worst thing you ever taste in your mouth acesanthin by itself and i would say very few people in the world have ever tasted this but you know they're not dr bob so they gave me some of this and we were in a meeting and they said here's some pure acesanthin crystals and really some you know pure stuff and it had this crystalline material all over it when you see the crystals now you got the pure stuff so um, I just ate this stuff about maybe half a gram. People couldn't believe I ate that much, but I did. Um, half a gram, 500 milligrams. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, you know, I didn't taste anything. My hands were red from the acesanthin that was on my palms. Um, you'd have to eat a lot of acesanthin for it to come out of your skin. Like if you eat too much, you drink too much carrot juice, the palms of your hands are begin to turn like kind of yellow or orange because all this this carotenoid, which we call, why we call them carrots, they start coming out these pigments, you know, beta carotene. Now the point is, is that you, 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 when you take nutrients like this, like a carotenoid, they just, you know, once your body's had enough, it just 
is saturated so it begins to come out your skin. Usually it's your palms, maybe the bottoms of your feet, that's where it starts, I think due to circulation. Uh, you take it something like magteen, magnesium althreinate, where it crosses the brain blood barrier. Can you take too much? No, because um, it's not going to hurt you, but you're going to waste it. You know, you're just wasting it to take, you know, it's a, it's a one gram dosage. So take one gram six, seven times a day if you want to really get a, a lot of it, but not all at once. Same with protein. Your body can't store protein. So you don't want to take spirulina all at once and chlorella all at once. Spread it out through the day. And that way, that way you've got really, you're just constantly feeding your body those amino acids, that protein. Again, your body can't store it. Your body can't store a lot of nutrients. Some of it can. Most of them it can't. So you, that's why you constantly want to be taking these things and, and consuming them. And um, anyway, so that's what's happening with the fermented acids, Anthony. It's going to take this uh, industry and really change it dramatically. Um, I, I'm always very grateful that uh, the guys that were producing the hematococcus algae were, you know, got it and gave us this incredible nutrient. But when um, it really wasn't a whole lot of astaxanthin in there compared to the other carotenoids and other things that were in there, we can't really identify. And uh, but here we've got pure astaxanthin. It's off the scale, and it literally is just, uh, it can, you know, it's 70 times. 70 times what we were getting before from algae. So nothing wrong with the algae stuff, great stuff. I've been taking it for many, many years. Uh, my health has been uh, really improved by taking astaxanthin through the years, but now we've got something that's new, that's more focused. And I think, you know, if you're really into nutrients and health the way I am, you're going to be happy to see this come on the market and, you know, become the kind of thing that, you know, we're not going to, we haven't seen before. So fermented astaxanthin, um, it's coming. We can do ferment all these uh, carotenoids, every one of them. Astaxanthin is the most difficult, so we started with that one. But we can ferment lycopene, um, beta carotene. Zeaxanthin, cathaxanthin, astaxanthin, cryptoxanthin. There's uh, there's there's over 500 different carotenoids uh, that we know about. I, I quite honestly, I think there's probably a few thousand. So very exciting to see this come on the market. Very exciting to see um, again. I can bring people health, something that's really healthy, and uh, a true market disruptor. And that's once in a lifetime. I'll never see anything like this again. But I do have another one on the the uh, the list here. Um, you know, CBD. If we could ferment that, you know, and I think we can, that'll be the next one. An incredible nutrient, and we're going to bring the price down and make it as pure as you can imagine. Dr. Bob, stay healthy, get your carotenoids, take your asses, Anthony. I'll see you next time.